As we are standing this morning on this glorious Lord's Day, we greet you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. We thank God for Reverend Wyatt and that powerful prayer. And we are thankful for all of those who are worshiping with us this morning by live streaming. And certainly we are thankful on this special Worship Sunday for our ushers. We thank God for each usher and we recognize them with a hand clap and applause this morning. Right now, let's applaud our doorkeepers. Hallelujah. Church, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God for all of you this morning as we've come to worship our Lord and our King. And our hymn of adoration this morning is Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. We invite you to join with the choir and with the congregation, all who are worshiping by live streaming, as we sing all stands of this great hymn, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have life in my soul. Which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Oh, since Jesus came into my heart. Oh, since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy. Oh, my soul, like the sea, fellows roll.
as we continue praise and worship to our Christ. And of course, will lead us now in the ministry of music. Let the church say hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.
a good God, and he's a prayer-answering God. He may not come when you want him to, but he's always, always, always on time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. It's time now to hear what God has to say. Turn in your Bibles or your worship bulletin to the text this morning. The text is coming from the book of Job, chapter 2. May we stand for the reading of God's word. And after reading the key verse, we shall pray and sing the hymn of preparation this morning, Sweet Hour of Prayer. From the second chapter of Job, From the New Living Translation of the Scripture, we find the key verse is verse 10. Verse 10. <clears throat> Prayerfully, let us read together. But Job replied, You talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all of this, Job said nothing wrong. Having faith in God when encountering personal suffering. I want you to repeat those words. Having faith in God when encountering personal suffering. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, we thank you for this Lord's day. We thank you for this is the day you have made. We have come to rejoice and to be glad in it. We acknowledge that in you we live and move and breathe and have our being and outside of you we can do nothing. We're lifeless, but you are our life and you are our lifeline. We thank you, O oh God, for who you are, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Thou who has always been and always will be God. Humbly before thee we come. Thanking you that you are prayer hearing God. And that you already know the petitions even now that are on our hearts. We thank you for this day. It's a beautiful day. We thank you that we are feeling as well as we are. And we are thankful, our Father, for those who are worshiping in person as well as by live streaming. Yeah. And even as we are worshiping, we are praying for the shut-ins, the hospitalized. We are praying for those, our Father, who are fighting for their lives. We are praying for the seniors, the elderly. Yeah. We are praying for those, our Father, who cannot help themselves. We're praying for those who are, our Father, incarcerated. We're praying, our Father, for those who are lost and separated from the love of Jesus the Christ. That they might be saved. That they might surrender their life and souls and wills to you, Lord Jesus. We're praying for the church. The church of Jesus Christ. 
the body of baptized believers the witnesses and disciples that you have allowed to remain here on earth to testify that Christ is the salvation of the world the salvation of the family the salvation of the community the salvation of the government the salvation of the world we come thanking you that you have proven yourself over and over and over again to be the only answer for the world today above you there is no other Jesus Christ is the only way that's why we sing we sing because as believers we are happy we sing because we are free we serve even as doorkeepers because we know your eyes are upon the sparrow yes, and we know you watch over all of us thank you this morning take charge of these vessels strengthen us and fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit that we might be spirit filled spirit empowered spirit led and that we might hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches in these last and evil days help us to remember you are still on the throne and you're calling us to be faithful and that when, we, when you come you're calling us to be found faithful faithful to you and faithful in our service to you bless everyone that's worshiping and those our father who need you in a special special way in our membership in this body called union we're praying for every family and we're praying for those our father who have loved ones who are waiting and on you to do what no other power can do All right. we love you lord yeah. have your way this morning have your divine way. Thou are the potter, we are the clay. Mold us and shape us after thy will while we're waiting. Yield it and steal. Bless this preacher, Father, you call as we stand here this morning. May we, our Father, decrease that you might increase and make us a vessel fitted to thy use that your word will go forth this morning rightly divided. But we ask it all in the name of Jesus the Christ. And for his sake we pray. Amen. 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 Sweet hour of prayer. All stanzas.
God's people. Praise the Lord. Who said them? They love the Lord. Said Amen. 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 Prayer we come this morning with this message from the second chapter of Job. Last Sunday we began this message from the book of Job with the first chapter. The first chapter. And today we come with the Lord of Letters to the second chapter of Job. Permit me again this message this morning with a truthful and undeniable uh, comment and really quotation from a well-known Bible scholar, pastor, <clears throat> and friend of the body of Christ, a friend of this church, I might add, Dr. Tony Evans, a well-known national and international leader and pastor and spokesman for Jesus the Christ. On the subject of Job's faithfulness and Job's integrity, as he lived his earthly life for God. Dr. Evans, specifically concerning chapter one, if you're looking, verse 22. In all of this, Job did not sin by blaming God. He remarks, in spite of the uh, catastrophes Job experienced, in spite of his losing his wealth in chapter one, we have studied and listened to and reviewed and meditated on. And in spite of losing his, his children all in one day, uh, 10 at, at that, seven sons and three daughters. In spite of the unexpected catastrophes, Job did not blame God or sin in any way towards God, <laughs> believing in the sovereignty of God. I want you to say that sovereignty. sovereignty. Believing in the sovereignty of God is to believe that whatever comes to you comes as a part of the wise purposes of God. Whatever comes, it means being convinced as a believer in Christ, standing on the foundation of Jesus Christ, that whatever comes, God intends it for our good and for his glory through all to see in the world that God is a good God. And God is a dependable God and that God is an on time God can I get a witness this morning as we consider this text today from chapter 2 and reading it it is clear that Satan who is the number one enemy of all mankind along with his uh, 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 army of demons his imps does not give up easily. Satan does not give up easily. I want you to say that Satan, Satan. does not give up easily. Give up easily. Amen. Uh, the record of chapter 2, Job opens as angels, angelic messengers, or celestial messengers of God, uh, who were sent out to do the biddings of God, are returning now to their posts. They're returning to the heavenly headquarters uh, to report in to God about their stewardship. I want you to say that stewardship. And I want you to say angelic stewardship. <laughs> Amen. As a result of the assignments that God has given to the angels, and God gives angels assignments, they're all around us all the time. Sometimes there are one or two, sometimes there are a multitude of angels that are accompanying us wherever we go because they are assigned to us by God. Let the church say amen. amen. After reporting, amen, coming back to headquarters to report to Jesus uh, regarding the accomplishments 
uh, that they had made and the situations that they had uh, to deal with. We find in, in chapter 2 the record that the accuser, Satan, appeared with them. Satan is in the mix. He's, he appears with them. But he appears as a subordinate. I want you to say that subordinate. And he presented himself before the Lord to renew his charges leveled against Job. It has been noted that many people at this point of the text have a hard time understanding God. <laughs> they have a hard time understanding why God allows this to continue. <laughs> Let the church say amen. <laughs> Let the church say amen again. Uh, Satan, uh, the answer is Satan is serving at this time the purposes of God. <laughs> amen. I want you to say that Satan at this time is serving the purposes of God. Amen. Amen. Satan couldn't do anything unless God permitted it. I want us to note in these first 10 verses that we are about to read that uh, Satan uh, has to come back to God because uh, his first mission failed, his first test against Job failed. And he comes back to God uh, and, and, and Satan comes with uh, further tests, uh, further lies and accusations according to chapter 2 verses 1 through 10 which causes Job to have to experience a second test. Let the church say second test. As we begin to read these verses together, verses 1 through 10 uh, of our text, prayerfully, I want us to please take note of several things again. Uh, in all of Job's troubles, in all of God's, Job's trials, in all of Job's uh, tests, in all of Job's grieving and the loss of his children and the loss of his servants and the loss of his wealth and all of his grieving over the pain, the inward pain, the emotional pain that he was experiencing and the frustration, especially not knowing why. Why is this all happening? Uh, Job, Job maintained his integrity. Job maintained his integrity. And secondly, we need to remember as we begin to read verses 1 through 10, he remained faithful to God. In spite of, he remained faithful to God. He did not, a man, uh, turn away from his maker, his creator. He kept his faith in God. And then no doubt, thirdly, the angels in heaven praise God for Job's faithfulness. Angels were praising God as they were observing how Job was going through all he was going through and never, never, amen, curse God. Let the church say amen. And then fourthly, we need to remember Job did not blame God or charge God uh, with doing a wrong towards him. He did not say, God, you are wrong. He didn't understand what was going on, but he did not tell God at any point, you're wrong. Let the church say hallelujah. 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 How many Christians have said in their own way to God, you're wrong. Can I get a witness? And yet, God is God. And he, he's always right. I want you to say God is always right. He's always right. He's perfect in all of his ways. And so Satan's, uh, 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 Satan gives a, a, a further accusation, or really accusations, in chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 10, um, whereby Job has to demonstrate, once again, his genuine inner integrity in his personal, physical suffering. He has to demonstrate, amen, not to go, but to Satan. Let the church say amen. amen. And because God says, have you tried my servant Job? He, God already knew Job. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Like God knows all of us. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let's read verses 1 through 10 together from the New Living Translation of the Scripture. New Living Translation of the Scripture. Let's read. One day the members of the heavenly court came again to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from, the Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Verse 3, then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. And he has maintained his integrity even though you urge me to harm him without cause. Verse 4, Satan replied to the Lord, skin for skin, a man will give up everything he has to save his life. But reach out and take away his health. Underline that. Take away his health, and he will surely curse you to your face. Verse 6, all right, do with him as you please. The Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. Spare his life. You can touch his body, but you can't touch his soul. Because our life is made up not of these outward clay bodies, but is inward. The intellect, the emotion, and the will. That composes the souls of people. I want you to say that the intellect, the emotions, and the will, the will, the will. And that's why we sing that hymn, my and thine, O Lord, let thy will be lost in mine. Verse 7, let's read on. So Satan left the Lord's presence, and he struck Job with terrible boils from head to foot. Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery, and he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. Verse 10. But Job replied, you talk like a foolish woman. Now, now, don't miss that. Job is very careful. He's very sensitive to his wife. Please understand that. He knows his wife has faith. But she's not as strong as he perhaps would want her to be at this point. I wish I had a prayer in church. And so he's very easy on her. Can I get a witness? He didn't say you are a foolish woman. Can I get a witness? He says you talk like a foolish woman. Can I get a witness this morning? He loves his wife. Can I get a witness? And even when, when, what he's going through, she's right there with him, and he knows that. But he has to, as the priest of his family and the priest of his wife, let her know, amen, no, oh God is up to something that I don't understand. You talk like a foolish woman. Let's read on. Should we accept only good things? From the hand of God and never anything bad. So in all of this, Job said nothing wrong. Don't miss that. You talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God? The real center of the key verse. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never never anything bad. So in all of this, Job speaking to his wife and speaking to us in this, in this canonized book, the Holy Writ, God breathed, profitable for teaching, for proof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Job says nothing wrong in what he was going through. Now my friends, I want to take note, it has been wisely expounded upon that in this text, several things are happening in these 10 verses. Satan is really looking for uh, the Achilles heel of 
of, uh, of uh, Job. The, the weakness in Job. Because, see, Satan is not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. Can I get a witness? Only what God records and what he observes. Can I get a witness? Amen. Job, 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 uh, Job amen, is, is, is walking in integrity. And, and so, so Satan is looking for that uh, weakness in Job so that he can get Job to turn, turn away from God. To put it in modern vernacular, to stop reading the Bible, to stop worshiping, to stop going to church, to stop serving God, to stop witnessing for the Lord, to say there is no God. As many today in what we've been going through with the COVID-19 virus and everything else, many have been shaky in their faith. To say the least. Can I get a witness this morning? Many are dealing with cancer. Can I get a witness? Many are dealing with other heart ailments and high blood pressure out of control and low blood pressure. Can I get a witness? Many are waking up having not slept. Sleepless night after sleepless night. And not even the medicine the doctor's giving him is doing any good. Faith in God is being tested. Satan is, Satan is really asking for access to Job. To touch him in body. To touch him in soul. And to touch him in spirit. In that order. He thinks that if he can get to Job, if he can get at Job in every part of his being, body, mind, body, soul, and spirit, he can shake Job's faith. He can up, uproot Job's faith. He can disrupt Job's integrity. Can I get a witness? And cause him to turn from trusting in God, having confidence in God, and cursing God to his face. Satan never gives up. I want you to say, Satan never gives up. Amen. All of us have lived long enough to know Satan never gives up. And if I'm telling the truth, hold your hand up and say, Amen. Never gives up. Job was hurting. He was hurting. He was in pain. Job's health has failed him. He, he's sitting on the ash heap or the city dump apart from his family. Because of so, his, his illness, whatever it was, he was smelling so bad and hurting so. He went out on the ash heap scraping his skin with a piece of broken pottery. Can I get a witness? He's hurting. Have you ever hurt? Have you ever been in pain so much that even Tylenol and all these other drugs didn't do you any good? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. He was in pain. Satan, Satan attacks Job's health as he attacks it. It has been observed that not all physical affliction comes from our enemy, Satan. Not all. Although Satan's demons can cause, among other things, blindness. I want you to take note of this. Jot this down according to Matthew chapter 12, verse 22. Uh, Satan and his demons can cause the inability to speak. According to Matthew chapter 9, verse 32 and 33, physical deformities. According to Luke chapter 13, verse 11 through 17, uh, excruciating pain. According to Second Chronicle, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, where Paul has a thorn in the flesh. He says, a message of Satan to buffet me. Or again, Satan can cause insanity. According to Matthew chapter 8, verse 28 through 34. And, he can, and, and physical afflictions 
uh, amen, can come about in our bodies through personal carelessness brought on by ourselves. Where we, on, we have only ourselves to blame. Let the church say amen. But even in this situation, and even in these situations, Satan knows how to use, amen, our pain, our illnesses, and our folly to further his cause. Because Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Can I get a witness? Job is hurting. Job is hurting. Charles Haddon Spurgeon is on record in, in, in looking at chapter 2, verse 10, and the good and the bad come into Job, having made these comments that are for us to hear. Our memory of God's goodness is often crushed by pain. Our memory. I want you to say that and think about it and jot it down because it's the truth. Our memory of God's goodness is often crushed by our pain, our personal pain. We're so much in pain that we've forgotten that God is good. When, when we suffer sharp pain or weary aches or high fever, we tend to forget the days of health and strength. We only remember the sharp intervals of weakness and the intervals of sorrow. When we stand over the grave of our loved ones, we are likely in the loss to forget that our loved ones were on loan to us. They did not belong to us. They belong to God. He's the owner of our loved ones. Can I get a witness? Thus, we should not complain when the owner takes our loved ones. When God takes what he gave. We should not complain. Oh, can I get a witness? Because they were lent to us for a season, for a time, for a period. Can I get a witness? The husband or the wife, the child or the children, the children whom we held even in our arms and embraced, the friend and all of the friends, they were blessings and loan, on loan from God. Somebody's praying with me. The brother, beloved brother, beloved sister, the, the, the aunts, great aunts and uncles and great uncles. They were on loan to us. The nieces and the nephews, cousins, hey man, the God children. I wish I had a free in church. Grandchildren, grandmama, and granddaddy. They were all on loan to us. Amen. For a season. For companionship, relationship, for help. To make life a little easier. Life a little better. And if it had not been for mom and daddy, we wouldn't even be living here today. Hearing this sermon. Can I get a witness? When these loved ones are gone, we should not look at that going. Amen. But we should really think about the fact that God gave them and we should thank God for them. We ought to thank God right now for all of our loved ones who've gone on to be with the Lord. Put your hand together and praise God. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Who knows, they may be looking on us right now. Praise the Lord. For he's good. And his mercy endures forever. Can I get a witness? Yes, we should bless the Lord at all times. His praise should continually be in our mouth. We live too much, brothers and sisters, in the present. We, we strike a mark of oblivion across the happy past. And we, we look with dread on the unknown future. 
We dwell on the trouble of the present and forget that God has been merciful in the past and his mercy endures forever. When we're growing old and feeble, we need to remember he will stand by us. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? We should bless the Lord for the years our loved ones and friends and family and church members and all whom we knew, high school classmates and all, we should thank God for the time we had them here on earth. And really, we should look forward to that great reunion that's promised in the by, the sweet by and by. We do these things, we, 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 we dwell on the present and the past because our minds are weak. But we should bless the Lord and ask him for strength to keep on toiling. Can I get witness? Spurgeon in his message on accepting adversity notes that perhaps your money is low and you're afraid of becoming poverty stricken. Be grateful that you have enough money to spare you to live a little longer. Stop complaining that you don't have enough money. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Did God feed us yesterday? Did God feed us last week? Did God feed us last year? Will God feed us today? Will God feed us tomorrow? Stop worrying about money. Nobody brought nothing in the world. And I don't care how rich you are, you won't take one penny with you. When we pass from this world, be grateful that we have enough. Can I get a witness? We call the days when God looked after us. Don't let memory fail because of present sorrows. I don't care how difficult they are. Don't let your memory fail. I find myself singing all the time. God will give you a song to sing. Can I get a witness? Amen, that will fit your needs at that very moment. Comfort you and really, that you, that you realize I don't have to worry about tomorrow. Many things about tomorrow. One hymn that says, I don't see to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow. <laughs> and I know who holds my hand. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. If that song existed in Job's day, I believe Job would have been singing it on the ash heap. Let me stand. I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Praise the Lord, take my hand, lead me on. Yes, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Can I get a witness? He helps us even in our infirmities, even in our praying. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray because we don't always know how to pray and what to pray for. And sometimes we are too full to pray. Sometimes we are, too, amen, our minds are too cloudy to pray. But the Holy Spirit is always praying on our behalf. And the Son of Jesus is always interceding. Seated at the right hand of the Father, the throne in heaven, making intercessions all the time on our behalf. Don't you know he's making intercessions right now? I said right now, as we're worshiping, the Lord God, God is praying for all of us. Somebody ought to shout glory to God. Job replied to his wife, shall we accept the good and not the, not the bad? And all of these things, Job did no wrong. He did no wrong. Can I get a witness? Uh, the philosophy of life is that things should be present pleasant all the time but that's a lie trouble will come can I get a witness and that's why the Bible is given to show us that life is not to be lived on amen 
amen, wrong philosophies. The reason we're here is not necessarily to have a good time. Can I get a witness? There are meaningful objectives to be attained in this life. God has a calling on each one of our lives. And that calling we must and we should fulfill. Can I get a witness? Even when it all turns sour, God is still pulling for us. Saying, hang in there. Run the race. The race is not given to the swift, not to the strong. But to he that endures to the end. Can I get a witness? When living is no longer fun, and life still is worth living. If it, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Amen, amen. A philosophy uh, that wants to view life in terms of pleasure. Jo jo Job reaffirms that we are not here for pleasure. We're here to do the will of God. We take his joy and his pleasure the pleasure of things of life, with gladness and with gratitude. If God chooses to send something that is difficult, he will not abandon us. He will hang in there with us. The reason we're here not, is not merely that we might have a good time. Can I get a witness? But we're here to do the will of God who sent us. That's what Jesus said when the Pharisees, amen, were vexing him or trying to at that, he says, my will, amen, is to do the will of him who sent me. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day because night is coming when no man can work. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? He wants us to begin, amen, he, Satan wants us to complain. Satan wants us to worry. Yes, Satan wants us to get mad. Yes, Satan wants us to fight people. Yes, Can I get a witness? Yes, Satan wants us to get upset with the family. Yes, Satan wants us to get upset with the church. Yes, Satan wants us to curse God out. Yes, but those who've been born again are like Job. I brought nothing naked. I came out of my mother's womb and naked I shall return. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Bless it. He, he, amen. Satan wanted him to say, curse God. Job said, bless it. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Satan wanted, amen, go Job to turn his back on God. Can I get a witness? But Job said, no, I'm going to bless the Lord. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Do I have a witness that will join me in saying, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, secondly, in our text, verses 11 through 13, we find the friends, the three friends of Job, coming to visit Job initially, coming to comfort him in his suffering. Let's read verses 11 through 13. Let's read 11 through 13 together from the New Living Translation. When three of Job's friends heard of the tragedy he had suffered, they got together and traveled from their homes to comfort and console him. Their names were Elphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shunite, the, and Zophar, the Namanite. When they saw Job from a distance, they scarcely recognized him. Wailing loudly, they tore their robes and threw dust into the air over their heads to show their grief. Verse 13, then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and nights. No one said a word to Job, for they saw that his suffering was too great for words. For seven days, these friends said not a word to Job. They, they wailed with him. They cried with him. They empathized with him. They felt what he was feeling. Can I get a witness? 
and he was in pain. They were, he was hurting. These were close friends who heard about his suffering and, and they came far and far and near together to be with that friend to bring comfort. Can I get a witness? Dr. Gene gets on the subject of the art of being silent. Has said this. When, when ministering to those who are suffering, we should initially focus our efforts on simply being present. On simply being present. I want you to say that. On simply being present. Present. Not on dispensing and giving out information. When we come to visit our friends who are hurting, we should be, have a closed mouth and a praying heart. Listen to the Holy Spirit who will give you instructions. Can I get a witness? And many times the Holy Spirit will just say, be quiet. Amen. If they feel like talking, let them talk. Can I get a witness, somebody? Though Job's friends eventually became frustrated and insensitive to Job, initially, they did the right thing. They were silent. They were simply there, expressing their love and concern for their friend and brother who was hurting. Unfortunately, amen, it is noted some Christians have not learned to practice this principle. They can come into somebody's house and just disrupt everybody and everything. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Amen, amen, amen. There is a time, the Bible says, to speak. And there's a time to be quiet. A lot of Christians have not learned that lesson. Can I get a witness? If it's hitting you, you are guilty. Just say, amen, Lord, have mercy. There's a time to speak. And there's a time to be quiet. Feel and sense what, what they are going through. And sometimes God will tell you what they're going through. You could very well be going through yourself. Can I get a witness? And that's when the tears start flowing. And it's so wonderful when your friends who are hurting see tears flowing from your eyes. They understand that you understand without saying a word that they're hurting and you're hurting with them. Can I get a witness? In some respect, Jesus illustrated this principle with his friend Lazarus. When he got word that Lazarus was dead, he tarried for a purpose. And then when he went to see a man, Mary and Martha, and they took him, and, 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 they, and he was taken to the grave site of Lazarus. The Bible said he found the mourners mourning, wailing. They were, they were, they were, they were carrying on. Amen. And Martha said, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus went on to say, hey, where is he? <laughs> and he said, I, 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 I am the resurrection and the life and the life I want you to say that and the life amen he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live he that believeth in me shall never die and then he went on to ask not only Mary and Martha but he asked the whole crowd he asked us today do you believe this and the question is do we believe this church if you do say yes Yes, he is the resurrection and the life. But I, I wanted to note that when Jesus went to the grave of Lazarus, a man, and he saw the wailing, and he didn't say anything. He could have said something at that point, but he just simply wept. He started weeping himself. His silence spoke volumes to these Jews who were standing around watching him. They observed how much Jesus loved his brother Lazarus. They observed how much he internalized and empathized with his brother Lazarus. He wept. The Messiah, the, the God-man wept. Can I get a witness? Lord, God never stops weeping. 
he weeps for us. He, he weeps for what you prayed about earlier this morning. He weeps for Cincinnati. He weeps for Ohio. He weeps for America. God weeps for the world. Can I get a witness? Because this is our father's world. His desire is that we come, that he, and he said in himself, I came that you might have life. And that you might have life more abundantly. Can I get a witness? Praise his holy name. Just as Job's faith encounters suffering in life, so it is that our faith will and has encounter the same kinds of sufferings. We will have our share of troubles. Sooner or later, things will go wrong. Sooner or later, things will break down that you can't fix. Can I get a witness? Sooner or later, misfortune will come. Discouragement and despair. Sooner or later, sickness will invade your body and my body. Can I get a witness? Sooner or later, the foundation on which we stand will be tested. Amen. And we sing on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Well, my brothers and sisters, in life, we're going to find ourselves revisiting those words. Can I get a witness? Not on the doctors, not on mama, not on daddy, not on husband, not on wife, uh, not on son or daughter, uh, not on money or assets, uh, not on reputation, uh, not on standing and position. Uh, uh, but if you're a Christian, you're going to find yourself uh, uh, singing and humming the words, my hope uh, is built uh, on nothing less mm, than Jesus' blood uh, and righteousness. Uh, I dare not uh, trust the sweetest frame uh, mm -hmm, but holy lean uh, on Jesus' name. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, uh, his oath, his covenant, uh, uh, his blood uh, support me in a whelming flood uh, uh, when all around uh, my soul gives way uh, he then uh, is all uh, my hope uh, and stay uh, can I get a witness uh, when he shall come uh, with trumpet sound uh, oh may I then uh, in him uh, be found uh, dressed uh, in his righteousness uh, faultless to stand uh, before his throne uh, on Christ on Jesus Christ uh, the son of rock uh, I stand uh, can you say that I stand uh, oh, oh, all of the ground uh, is sinking sand uh, can I get a witness uh, can I get a witness uh, hallelujah uh, to the lamb of God uh, or has God trusted you this morning uh, with his silence uh, a Silence uh, that has uh, a great meaning. Uh, God can be silent uh, with each of us. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, perhaps you've been praying, uh, but you haven't heard a clear message uh, from the Lord. Uh, he's been silent. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, silence. Uh, silence. Uh, are you mourning before? God uh, because uh, you cannot hear his voice. Uh, when you cannot hear God uh, you will find uh, that he has trusted you. Uh, I said he's trusted you. Uh, amen. In the most uh, intimate way. Uh, he has trusted you uh, with absolute silence. Uh, not a silence of despair uh, but a pleasure uh, because he saw uh, that you could withstand
hand uh, an even uh, greater uh, revelation. Uh, time uh, is nothing to God. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, a thousand years uh, is but a day uh, in the sight of God. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, for a while, uh, you may have said, uh, I asked God to give me bread, uh, but he gave me a stone. Uh, he did not give you a stone. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, and the day you find uh, that he gave you uh, the bread of life, uh, can I get a witness? Uh, because I stopped by to tell you, uh, the best food uh, is not physical food. Uh, the best food uh, is spiritual food. Uh, man uh, cannot live by bread alone, uh, but by every word uh, that proceeded uh, out of the mouth of God. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, we need his word. Uh, we need to hear him say uh, I am uh, that I am. Uh, I am uh, Jehovah God. Uh, I am uh, the light of the world. Uh, I am uh, the door. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I am uh, the good shepherd, uh, and the good shepherd uh, gives his life uh, for his friend. Uh, I am uh, the way, uh, the truth, uh, and the life. Uh, no man uh, comes to the Father uh, but by me. Uh, I am uh, the Alpha uh, and the Omega, uh, the beginning uh, and the end. Uh, the first uh, and the last. Uh, I existed uh, before there was anything. Uh, I am uh, Jehovah. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, I am uh, your bread. Uh, I am your doctor. Uh, I am your lawyer. Uh, I am your friend uh, that stick it closer uh, than a brother. Uh, I'm a way maker. Uh, heart fixer. Uh, mine 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 regulator do you know him this morning do you know him this morning I am the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob I am the rose of Sharon the lily of the valley I am your way home I am God do you his name is Jesus, uh, Mary's baby, uh, Jesus, uh, the bright and morning star, uh, Jesus, uh, who died on the cross uh, for our sins uh, and was buried, uh, buried uh, in a borrowed tomb, uh, but glory, 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 you don't have to worry. Uh, worry uh, about anything uh, because early 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 Sunday morning uh, God the Father uh, raised his son from the dead uh, help, uh, his power uh, can you say glory glory uh, can you say I have God's power? He lives. Can you say he lives in me? Is that true? Shout for joy. Is that true? Shout glory. Is that true? Praise his name. If that's true, tell somebody God. God is real. God is real. God is real. He's real in my soul. He's real. He has washed me and made me whole. Do you know him? Say yes. Yes. Stop worrying. Stop fretting. Stop complaining. Trust in the Lord. What a friend we have in Jesus. All 
my sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything. Do you have anything to talk to the Lord about? Hold your hand up and say everything, 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 oh, everything to God in prayer. To God who's able, he's able, he's able, he's able. Carry it through. He's able. He's able. Come male course. He's able. Don't ever doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. Oh, you can't make down in my
feel all right. You can dance for Jesus. I feel all right. I feel all right. Oh, I feel all right in my heart. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Jesus, come to Jesus, come. We extend an invitation to those who are here who may not have received Christ. You may indicate that you're ready to receive him by acknowledging him. Raising your hand right now if you have not received Christ as your Savior. He's ready to save you right now. Oh, he will say, oh, if we all are Christians, thank God. There are people we need to pray for. The prime minister stands ready to pray with those persons as you leave their names in the decision calls that you have. Those who are listening and worshiping by radio and by live streaming, I want you to know there are steps being given right now. Oh. Only trust him on Jesus says with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made known unto salvation there are steps being given if you follow those steps and surrender your life and will to Christ believing that he's the son of God that he died on the cross for your sins and that he rose for your justification he'll come into your life right now he will say you when Christ comes into your life he seals you with the Holy Spirit until the day he claims you and when you're sealed by God the devil in hell cannot Lord the you with his spirit oh you doubt him don't him that you will follow those steps pray right now and ask Christ to come into your life he will come and then you need to connect with the church a Bible based church Christ and the Holy Spirit and give your confession and become united in that body come to Jesus Jesus, come tomorrow is not promise the day in which you hear the voice of the Lord don't harden your heart but say yes to his will and yes to his way Jesus loves you. he wants to live eternally with us in heaven oh thank you Jesus
even when you were silent, you trusted our hearts. Just hum. faith in God always, always, always when encountering your personal sufferings having faith always in God now the Lord may bless and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you be gracious unto you Lord, lift this countenance upon you. Oh, yeah. Is my prayer and give you peace, healing, deliverance, love, yes. confidence. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Creatures here below. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness that runs. World and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend in the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in the holy place? He that have clean hands and a pure heart. Not the devil is over the vanity. Not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord. 